Hey everyone, my name is Jessica Vaughn. In case you do not know me, I am the best-selling author of the book, Know Your Worth, and I'm really passionate about helping people become confident, whole, and know that their identity is in Christ. But I've been a business owner for six years, going on seven, and it's been a blessing. But you know, when I first started this business, I had no clue who God was, and I was really just beginning my own journey with it. So to say that I, always had this as my ministry, I guess you could say was definitely not true. It really has evolved into my ministry because my focus is no longer on serving me and how I can serve myself, but how I can serve others and raising up other leaders to be successful. Now, if you're in that area where you're unsure if God's calling you or you're unsure, you know, if you have purpose in business or to create a ministry is that when he's calling you, he's equipping you. But what happens is that even for myself is we tend to talk ourselves out of our destiny. We talk ourselves out of purpose because one way is definitely not the way that we want to go, especially if we think of Jonah, how he fled to Tarshish instead of to Nineveh because sometimes it's easier to disobey God than to obey God. And so when I started to put business and ministry together, a lot of people are like, you know, should I share my faith and how open should I be? And I'm like, y'all just need to be yourself. So if Jesus is who is a part of you, obviously, then we need to make sure that he's number one, that we are not afraid to post about him or to share our faith because of somebody else or because of what somebody else thinks. You know, I always say in my head, you know, he would never abandon me. He would never just hide me, but that he would proudly promote me or proudly and speak highly of me. So when I think about not posting something or not posting about my faith, now is it's not a question. I'm gonna have unfollows and I'm gonna have people that you know, don't like me, but we need to understand that his word and giving the glory to him for our works is the most important thing that we could ever do. Now, what happens when it comes to business and ministry is that we tend to focus on all the wrong things because whether you're new in business or you're whether you're new in ministry, it's easy to be self-focused of how can I make this business work? How can I be successful? How can I make more money? How can I provide for my family? So it becomes so self-focused that we lose the, the point and we lose that Jesus is our focus, and that serving people over a product is our focus. So if we look at Ecclesiastes, which is where the Lord has planted me lately, and, and I've just been learning so much in this, in this book, and what I love about it, and I'm just gonna quote some scripture, is that in Ecclesiastes 2, 10 and 11, it says, "'And whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them, I kept my heart from no pleasure, for my heart found pleasure in all my toil, and this was my reward for all my toil. Then I considered all that my hands had done, and the toil I had exp expended in doing, and behold, all was vanity in striving after wind, and there was nothing to be gained under the sun." And I love that this scripture is really saying like, I've worked and I've worked and I've hustled and I've done all these things and I've gained all this money and I have all this and I've, you know, denied myself no pleasure. So I've done all these things. And so when I think about like my business and how I've transformed it from not being faith to faith to not being about all about myself because, hey, we're human, we're sinners, right? So we're going to have those thoughts. But to always remember that, you know, even like here when in Ecclesiastes when it's talking about this is that. We had to realize that that should not be our focus and that we should be making sure that we're serving a God that that are serving in, in, in business and in our ministry is that we're, we are serving our God. But even though we're serving people, that's like, that's like the benefit is that when we're serving God, we're going to be able to serve our people because there's been moments where I get caught up of how I should run my business or my ministry. And I'm like, oh, well, so-and-so is doing this and so-and-so is doing that. And then you start to chase the wind. 
Amen, right? We start to chase what everybody else has. We start to chase what everybody else is chasing. We gotta do what everybody else is doing. And then we feel like we're getting nowhere or we're everywhere and we're completely overwhelmed and unhappy. Have you ever been there? I have. So when I really started to incorporate fitness is that I idled my body for so long. So for a while, it was all that I would post on Facebook. It was the ab pictures. It was the flexing pictures. It was how big my muscles were. It was finding the right pose, you know, so that people could see me. And so what I stopped doing, and this was such a pivotal moment for me when it came to to modesty is okay in this fitness business, is that you don't have to just post pictures of your skin or of your abs or of your legs or whatever it is to be successful. Because I thought that in the fitness industry that that's what you had to do. And so when it came to modesty, I just thought, okay, well, you know, this isn't bad. I have shorts on and a sports bra or whatever. I started to justify God's word and God's perspective of modesty. And I thought I had to do those things to be successful. But what I realized is that I didn't. And a pivotal moment for me was when somebody had posted on my timeline after I made this transition of not posting any pictures of my stomach anymore and not posting flexing pictures anymore. And I'm never going to, I'm not going to say that I'm never going to post another picture of me, you know, flexing my bicep or, you know, whatever it is. And I have it in actually a really long time because that's a trigger for me. And so when it came to my fitness, I really wanted to understand and to portray to others that they don't have to have this perfect body, that I don't want them to compare myself, compare themselves to me. And can I hold responsibility for their actions? Absolutely not. But can I be somebody that steps in the place and says, you don't have to? Yes. You know, so when somebody posted on my timeline, thank you for being somebody in fitness who covers up their skin and doesn't wear, you know, short shorts and just a sports bra or a thong (laughs) when it comes to fitness is because her husband follows my page. And although again, I can't be responsible for her husband's actions or what he thinks, but I can be responsible for somebody or for myself and to make sure that I'm leading others to Christ, not to myself. And that was a defining moment for me. So when you think about how fitness can go into your business and your faith can go into your business is that it's not a separation of what goes where. It's this is all of who I am and this is all that's going to go into my business. You know, even even some people on my team, I was an, not a non-believer, but I wasn't somebody who was just like crazy about my faith, especially in the beginning. And over the years I've transformed So I still have people on my team that don't necessarily believe exactly the same things that I do, but I'm not going to force them. I'm not going to tell them that this is what they have to believe. I'm going to lead with love and I'm going to encourage them and I'm going to share with them what what I hold on to. And so we need to make sure that we're doing the same thing. And one more in Ecclesiastes is that in five or in four, In 4, 4, and 9 through 11, it says, Then I saw all toil and all skill in work come from a man's envy of his neighbor. This is also vanity and striving after the wind. Let's make sure that our work is not just to get ahead of our neighbor. Let's make sure that our work is not about comparison to our neighbor and making sure that, okay, so-and-so is doing this, so I need to be doing this, because it's so easy when you're in fitness or you have this ministry to change everything that you do when something new comes out or when somebody new tries something and you're like, okay, should I be doing this? And I should, and let's make sure that our work is not based on our neighbor. And nine through 11 says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone and he who falls and no one there to lift him up. So let's make sure that we are serving together, that we're serving alongside of each other. Because let me tell you, I am somebody in my business and in my ministry where I just did it myself and I just 
that's what I thought I had to do. I just served basically my own desires. And you don't have to do that. Let's make sure that we're serving him with our actions and our words and our business and our ministry. And then a little bit down, it says in Ecclesiastes 5.10, it says, He who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This is also vanity. So if you're only in business or you're only in your ministry to gain money, you're never going to have enough. You're never going to be at the, at the right rank. You're never going to be at the highest rank. You're never going to be at the best rank. You're always going to be striving and, and wanting something more, wanting something better. Just like in the scripture reminds us is you can have all these things. You can have more money. You can have riches, but it's never going to be enough. It's never going to be enough. So you have to define what your enough is. Making sure that, you know, I had to make sure I identified with character traits of where I wanted my heart. So when I'm running my business and my ministry and, and making sure I'm keeping in check with my fit, fitness and my faith is that I'm making sure that I'm living with integrity. That is like, I preach this all the time and it's, I'm so, don't do something that is in a sinful nature just to get ahead. Because you like it's like sitting on purpose. So know what your character traits are and how you want to run your business and your ministry. And the perspective of your faith and your fitness is that God would never deny you, so we shouldn't deny him. I really hope this inspired you. And if you have any questions, you can just follow me on Instagram or you know, come follow me on Facebook. I'm at JessVon22 leave encouraged today knowing that you don't have to be perfect, that he's not asking you to, and that you don't have to be somebody you're not. You don't have to chase after the wind. You don't have to show your body to be successful with fitness in a business. Is that he's saying, come as you are. And that's exactly what we should do.